Let's see. All right. Let's see what happens there. Here's my concept. Um, do you want to start just by asking questions? Is that probably the easiest way? If you want to, you know, jump right into it, I'm not going to stop you. Oh. Yeah, because I, I thought for if we get interrupted, you should at least get what you wanted. So why don't we start there, and then okay. I can backtrack and, and fill in where it's it's not clear. Okay. All right. Now, you said that you were a high school teacher. I'm a high school teacher. Which you know, school? so therefore, why do we really have to listen to him? <laughs> no, no, I, I understand. It's a low method on the um, uh, totem pole. Who listens to People who can do, people who can't teach. And, you know, I, I, I fell into teaching because I really wasn't good at other things. So, I'll admit, I'll admit that. Which school do you work for? Um, let's see. Right now I work for a charter school um, in Fort Lauderdale. And um, the idea is that... The, the latest idea among charters is that you... Take a bunch of computers. Well, well let, let's think about what high school is usually like. You, you, you process people in here, giving them 16 courses, more or less, or 24 courses, um, six courses a year. And so you have these kids balancing these big, heavy books. You know, you got six of these that you've got to carry through for a whole year. Or maybe it's three and three, but you're still asking them, at nine o'clock we want you to think about math. At 10 o'clock we want you to write things. And at 11 o'clock we want you to be doing science or history. We're telling you when and what you will be thinking and where you will be thinking it. Now, I work at a place where the, the students generally, they come here because um, it, it's an we call it an online blended program. The charter school set up, uh, ours happens to be in a bank, an old bank. Banks, it's good when there's financial problems because then real estate becomes available for schools. So I, I got 50 students all in one room. Contrasted with a high school, if I was teaching there, I'd have 25 students and I would be the only adult in the room. Nobody would really be watching me, there's no cameras, whatever. I work in a place where there are three teachers, 50 to 75 computers and students. Um, so we still have that ratio of one teacher to 25. And so I'm walking around helping students it, it's it, and I'm watching other teachers how they so it's like an ongoing education for me as a teacher so I, I want to start off by saying yeah I'm a high school teacher but I'm a daily improving teacher because I'm being watched by my colleagues I have three colleagues they tell me hey you know you could have handled that easier or I found it's easier with that particular student to instead just drop a note not talk to them because they don't like being interrupted it's, it's like an ongoing seminar in psychology in this situation because I'm constantly getting feedback so I I'd like to you know normally I just introduce myself as a high school teacher and that fills the, the listener's mind with the idea that a high school teacher is someone who is in control of a group of students and he likes it that way and 30 years later he leaves and has a pension. Right? That's, that's the conception, right? A lot of high school teachers go there because it's very stable work. We don't have to go and find a new job uh, three weeks from now. We know there will be students there two years from now. Most high school teachers, even if teacher unions tell you, oh, we're here to protect you, come on. If one school hires me, I can go and find another job. I don't have to change what I'm doing. I've taught math. They will always teach math. There will always be someone. 
Contrast that with what's happening in the real economy. There are people who used to make cars, and they're finding out that, well, if you want to make cars or if you want to make computer programming, might as well go over to India or China. You, you basically have to change what you're doing. Um, most people, uh, high schools come from a 1950s model where you train, you became good at something, and then you did it for 30 years. One job. That's not going to happen in this new economy. The colleagues I used to have in high school, I used to teach in a normal brick building. The, the colleagues were telling people, basically, if you study hard, you'll get a job, and then you'll have a job like me. In other words, you'll, you'll be in one place, and you'll work, and then you'll retire. As a journalism student, I'm sure you picked up on the idea that that model doesn't work anymore. Even as a journalism student, you may not have a job. You may have to just be a freelancer for the rest of your life. And all that you do is just create, come up with ideas for articles, go to a place, and you have to pitch it. You're a salesperson. I, I, I'm guessing. Pretty much how it works. <laughs> it, it used to be that you, you, you did a lot of little articles on a college newspaper, and then you showed your portfolio, and there would be some newspaper out there that would take you on as an intern, and then you'd move up from um, doing obituaries and you know local articles, and then you build your resume, and then you go to a bigger newspaper, and then you get your beat, you become the sports writer, and that's what you do for the next 30 years. There was no idea that newspapers could close down, consolidate, just dry up entirely. Oh, well, we're going to get all our news from AP. You know, we don't need an analyst. For you, if you're, in, what kind of journalism are you interested in? Convergent journalism. Uh, well, well what, uh, if you were writing stories five years from now, will it be on Middle East politics or will it be on... If I was writing story, stories three years from now, it would most likely uh, be either... I, I can't even really tell you. Oh, 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 I mean, people. do you have a, a general idea? Like, would you want to be in Afghanistan writing articles? Or would you like to be in New York City writing articles? Or would you... Well, the thing is, with my field of study, it's not just writing articles. It's producing oh. video and audio cool. to go oh. along with them All right. for the so web. That's why it's convergent. Got it. Okay, so you would be doing your work for an institution, or would you have a variety of clients? Well, it would depend. If I'm directly connected to a newspaper or a magazine or a news website, then I would be working for them and producing stories for them. If I was... A like writer, an Anderson Cooper or somebody yeah. like that. Because, I mean, essentially, he probably walks around with a little video camera. If he doesn't have somebody and he's shooting and then he says, okay, go shoot what I just shot because that, you know, I saw it yesterday and it looked really good. He probably has that kind of um, versatility. And it's very important because now everything is kind of moving together.